welcome to Hong Kong. Now, before we get started, let's just check everyone's up to speed. So in 2001, yes, that long ago, Rockstar released Grand Theft Auto 3 and everyone went bananas, including men in suits at Activision who thought, ooh yeah, we fancy a bit of that and got Santa Monica-based Luxaflux to knock up GTA clone True Crime Streets of LA, released in 2003. Wasn't terrible, wasn't great, did well enough for Activision to get Luxaflux to do True Crime New York City along similar lines in 2005. And once again, it was just alright. A few years passed and the US publisher hired another studio, United Front Games in Vancouver, to make a third true crime, this one set in Hong Kong. Well, it was delayed and then last year Activision ran out of patience and canned it. Big Cheese Eric Hirschberg saying it just wasn't going to be good enough. Ow. Game over? Not quite. Step forward Square Enix, who saw the game, thought it was Ace, bought it off Activision, renamed it Sleeping Dogs, and here we are in Hong Kong to have a proper look at it. Got that? Great. Let's get on with it then. Like its forebears, Sleeping Dogs is undeniably and explicitly in the mould of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, shit! What sets it apart is the location. Hong Kong, formerly a British colony until signed over to China in 1997, has a vibrant East meets West culture and a completely different character from day to night, where its mountains disappear into the dark and garish neon lights fizzle into life around the famous harbour and beyond. In other words, its gleaming skyscrapers, packed street markets and everything in between form the perfect playground for an open world video game. It's such a beautiful city. You know, it's so geographically diverse if you just go around the island. And so set in an open world game, you know, the, the central character is the city. And so to have a place that naturally has different areas which you can tailor different kinds of gameplay to, I think was very exciting for us. It's different, it's unique. You know, gamers wouldn't have been to a city like this before and that made it exciting for us. Obviously, we have not recreated the city street for street. That wasn't our goal. Our goal was to capture the essence of Hong Kong, to capture the flavor of the neighborhoods, and really try and bring the essence, you know, the, the, the feel and the authenticity of, of being in Hong Kong to the game. Now, about that new name. Sleeping Dogs, obviously the expression, let sleeping dogs lie. And uh, in this instance, our, our main character, Wei Shen, goes undercover with the triads in Hong Kong, uh, thinks he kind of knows it all, uh, having been undercover in San Francisco, and finds out that he's in a little bit over his head more than he's been before and uh, the story unravels from there. Naturally, it's all extremely violent, but combat fans may be interested to learn that a leaf has been taken out of Batman's book with a free-flowing, combo-driven system employed, topped off with a range of gruesome environmental kills. That, for United Front, is a key difference. Without a doubt, it's the on-foot experience. When we started this, it was uh, it was all about that Hong Kong cinema action feel where, you know, from uh, the melee combat standpoint to shooting to, you know, crowd dodging and running to driving. We really wanted to create a set of mechanics that, uh, you know, combined seamlessly. You know, there, there were no modes, so to speak, that you could move effortlessly between one and the other. And I think that's what people will take away from this game, just how seamless that is and how much fun it is. That the studio can now fulfill its vision is in no small part thanks to this guy. It's hard for me to say why they dropped it, but I can tell you why we signed it. When we looked at the game, it was probably just before everything was coming. To, it was just starting to come together. So whether they took their view and their decision kind of, you know, perhaps they couldn't see when it had all come together. I don't know. It's hard for me to comment on that. But what we saw, we really liked and we could see the potential of where the game was going to go. Just finishing an open world game takes a lot of time and you know, we wanted to put something out that was going to be polished, that uh, people you know, could love and, uh, and it's those little details that you don't get the time to when you're rushed. So I think you know, the biggest thing that they brought is just a level of polish to the experience that I think everyone's going to benefit from. We've got a lot of experience in making open world games so we know the development pattern for games like that is a little bit different to the traditional model in that you, know, you go quite a long time before you kind of see the true value of everything so it kind of all comes together very late in the process. We always believed in this game and we have had an incredibly uh, uh, skilled and dedicated team on it through that entire period. So we had uh, faith and confidence and we're just glad to be able to finish it in the square. 
To get us into the spirit of the game, we embarked on a bizarre tour of Hong Kong, which included many of the top tourist sites, including men fighting on a roof, men playing cards, men selling drugs. Let's go, come on, we got some nice stuff for you here. Great A. I think Johnny has to test it. And men making us drink snake blood. Oh, interesting after the <laughs> <laughs> The detail with which the city state has been recreated in the game is clearly impressive. But with the whole world waiting to buy a ticket back to LA in GTA 5, Sleeping Dogs needs to offer much more than a guided tour. Obviously we don't want to ship like against those guys, right? I mean, they've got a huge audience and we're bringing a new IP, so we've got to build our audience for this game. So it'd be pretty reckless of us to go kind of head to head. We'd like distance between the two, but you know, I think there's room in the market for both of them. There's, there's not tons and tons of excellent open world games. I love what those guys are doing, but we feel like we're bringing something different, you know, in terms of the city, in terms of the mechanics, and in terms of the cop storyline as well. You know, the, uh, the, the cop storyline and being an undercover cop, you see it in so many movies and so many TV shows, but in games it's not really something that is explored that much. So, like I said, you know, we feel like with the city and the depth of action mechanics that we have, and you saw everything in there today from the driving and shooting and the combat and even the areas that we've scripted to be almost like linear missions, and then adding the cop sort of flavor over top of everything, we feel like it's really different. Sleeping Dogs is due out on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in the second half of this year. He's in.